February 9th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Mark chapter 12, from the New Testament. Then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard. He put a fence around it, dug a pit for its wine press, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenant farmers and went on a journey. At harvest time, he sent a slave to the tenants to collect from them his portion of the crop. But those tenants seized his slave, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. So he sent another slave to them again. This one they struck on the head and treated outrageously. He sent another, and that one they killed. This happened to many others, some of whom were beaten, others killed. He had one left, his one dear son. Finally he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him, and then inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, and threw his body out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is from the Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now they wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowd, because they realized that he told this parable against them. So they left him and went away. Then they sent some of the Pharisees and the Herodians to trap him with his own words. When they came, they said to him, Teacher, we know that you are truthful and do not court anyone's favor, because you show no partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But he saw through their hypocrisy and said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me a Daenerys and let me look at it. So they brought one, and he said to them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. Then Jesus said to them, Give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, also came to him and asked him, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, that man must marry the widow and father children for his brother. There were seven brothers. The first one married, and when he died, he had no children. The second married her and died without any children, and likewise the third. None of the seven had children. Finally, the woman died too. In the resurrection, when they rise again, whose wife will she be? For all seven had married her. Jesus said to them, Aren't you deceived for this reason, because you don't know the scriptures or the power of God? For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Now as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. Now one of the experts in the law came and heard them debating. When he saw that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is, Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The expert in the law said to him, That is true, teacher. You are right to say that he is one, and there is no one beside him, and to love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered thoughtfully, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Then no one dared any longer to question him. While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he said, How is it that the experts in the law say that the Christ is David's son? David himself, by the Holy Spirit, said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David himself calls him Lord, how can he be his son? And the large crowd was listening to him with delight. In his teaching, Jesus also said, Watch out for the experts in the law. 
They like walking around in long robes and elaborate greetings in the marketplaces, in the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour a widow's property and, as a show, make long prayers. These men will receive a more severe punishment. Then he sat down opposite the offering box and watched the crowd putting coins into it. Many rich people were throwing in large amounts, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins worth less than a penny. He called his disciples and said to them, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the offering box than all the others. For they all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in what she had to live on, everything she had. God, I always love this story of the woman who all the rich people are throwing in their coins, their required tithing, and and she comes in and gives so much less than everybody else, but so much more in your eyes. So it took me a while to figure out tithing. I had to do a lot of study and people had to do a lot of teaching to me to truly understand that everything that we have is because of you. There is not a single thing that we have in our life that didn't come from you. All of the blessings we have, uh, especially those we take for granted, all of the blessings we have, including all the money we have, is because of you. So in uh, turning back 10%, which is all you require of us, in turning back 10% uh, to help with your kingdom is our tithing of, of what we have. And I've heard such interesting questions about tithing. Do I have to tithe on the pre-tax amount? <laughs> um, if I tithe, will, will I really get all the rewards that it says in the Bible? And so I know I have learned, God, to come to you with with no expectations when I tithe at all except for uh, joyfulness in my heart that you have blessed me so much and that giving back 10% or whatever I feel that you're calling me to give back at that time, uh, sometimes more than that, uh, is sincerely a blessing to me to be able to give that money back to the church and, and allow it to do its work. But then we get to the story of this woman and a Daenerys that at that time that day's wage so we can kind of think of it in terms in our in our world of about a hundred dollars uh, approximately for a day's wage and they were tithing off of that and the couple coins that they were throwing in were such a small portion of that hundred dollars that they had just received for that day's wage yet this woman whose obedience you value so much came and gave what would be equal to today, I know it says a penny in the Bible, but today would be equal to about a dollar and a half. So not only wasn't it her entire day's wage, but it was all that she had. A dollar and a half. And I wonder, God, how many of us really understand that tithing means that even if we're down to our last dollar and a half and the lights are about to get turned off and all these other things are going on, that we are still called to be obedient and tithe the 15 cents off of that dollar and a half. Yet she didn't do that. She had nothing in terms of what we consider value and, and she gave it all to you. And I have no doubt, even though we don't hear it in the story, I have no doubt that you blessed her greatly for doing that. So help us today to figure out, God, what we are holding on to. What, what we're trying to control. Is it money? Is it I will tithe as long as I can pay all these other bills and as long as there's that kind of cushion in checking, <laughs> in my checking account. But boy, if we get below a certain point and we start scrambling for money, uh, yeah, I don't have the money to tithe. That's control. That's not trusting you enough. What else are we holding back? Are we holding back our time? I would rather watch Mad Men on TV than go serve at Reach Out and Feed the Homeless. Is it time that we're trying to hold on to that's really tight? What about relationships? I don't think people like some of the words in the Bible. Because what you're actually calling us to do and our very, very watered-down Americanized version of it is two totally different things. 
You say I ask you to give up everything and follow me. And I guarantee there's not a single one of us listening, including myself, that have given up everything and followed you. I'm still working on it. I'm still learning what everything means. I'm starting to get a clearer pic picture because you have helped me <laughs> by taking away certain things in my life, uh, which are definitely blessings. So when you call us to give all, God, today I just pray that you show us what that all means to you. And, and I know all means all, but show us what the, those things right now that are standing in our way from getting closer to you, from being more in your will, from doing things the way that you want them done. Show us how to get out of our own way so that you can offer us these blessings that you have already decided to give us. God, I, I do know that we have a lot of things standing in our way. A lot of obstacles, some intentional, some unintentional. And I just ask that you very clearly show those to us today. That if we still don't quite understand tithing, that it is the only place in the Bible where you allow us to test you. So for people who still aren't quite sure about the tithing thing, God, allow them to test you this week. Allow them to give 10% of all that they have to you, to your church, and see what happens. For people who are holding on tight to their time, allow them to be more generous with their time instead of it be something, oh, I just want to sit in front of the TV and relax, I've earned it. I don't recall any place <laughs> at all in the Bible where your son relaxed at all. Now, there was Sunday, but even then he was still talking to people and teaching people. It was still all about his mission here on earth. And then for those of us who are struggling with relationships, there are relationships that we need to give up. There's relationships we need to work on. There's relationships we need to pursue. But we're afraid for so many reasons. Usually loneliness at the top of that list, or we feel we deserve to be in that type of relationship, or gosh, everybody else is married. How come I can't be married? very society view of relationships. So whatever it is, God, that we're holding on to that we aren't choosing to give it all to you, can you show us those things that are blocking our relationship with you today? Ah, that would be such an amazing blessing to get to see those things, although I probably know them in my heart, to get to see those things and what's important to you um, and what I can continue to work on uh, giving up to get to the point of giving it all to you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.